morning. It is a beautiful day down here in the southeast of the UK and I thought it'd be a great opportunity to talk to you about avocado trees. Um, I have planted a young avocado tree in my garden, kind of more as a, as a test and a project to see how we kind of get on with it. Um, but I thought I'd kind of discuss how uh, avocados are split into various categories because not all avocados are created equal and choosing the right variety in our temperate climate to really give you the best chance of actually this tree surviving here. Uh, now this is, if this tree survives and does well, it'll not be the first avocado that has ever been successfully grown down here in the south of the UK. If you, you're welcome to Google online, have a look at the variety of different avocados that have been grown here, some to uh, enormous sizes. And I think the one in Lewisham uh, a number of years back had to be removed because of the roots were undermining the house. But avocados, the right variety can be grown. Now they're divided into three main groups or categories of, of the tree. They're the West Indians, uh, the Guatemalan and the Mexican. Uh, West Indian is the most, the, well the least uh, frost tolerant out of all of them. You know that's the sort of tree that you, you can't even eat an ice cream too near because it'll shrivel up and, and die. So, so we write off any West Indian varieties of avocado. Guatemalan is one of the most uh, produced varieties, um, Hus being one of the well known uh, avocados that is generally produced commercially uh, worldwide. Uh, they also have Pinkerton, Reed, I think Gwen is another one of the Guatemalan. Guatemalan varieties will take down to about a one, maybe zero, maybe slightly under, uh, but for very, very short periods of time. So they're pretty frost sensitive trees. The main variety that we, we want to look for and go for is the Mexican. Uh, Mexican varieties include things like Zutano, uh, Bacon, Fuerte, and some of the most hardy ones are Mexicola. Uh, Stewart uh, is another one. I uh, haven't been able to really find the Mexicola. Mexicola is supposed to be able to take down to like a minus seven, minus eight degrees, but I haven't really been able to find that one. The tree that I've managed to get hold of is a Bacon avocado, which is reportedly hardy down to about a minus five. Uh, so we'll see how we go. Uh, with that, I'll show you the tree in a second. Uh, most of the trees that you'll probably see uh, generally at some nurseries because they do stock, you know, as kind of specimens of interest, they'll, they'll have the odd avocado tree, will generally be a hus. Uh, I've got a hus uh, variety in a pot, um, and I'd, uh, that was kept in an unheated greenhouse over winter, and that kind of struggled just with that. I mean, it's alive and it's putting new growth out, but it sort of it didn't, it wasn't particularly too happy. Whereas the bacon that was planted at the same time end of last year um, had only some light protection for some frost and didn't even blink at the cold weather. Um, I'll show you that in a second. One of the main types of varieties or ways to do, uh, determine uh, a Mexican as opposed to a Huss is the leaf. If you break a leaf off a Guatemalan a Huss variety of avocado trees it will have absolutely no smell. It just smells like a green grass kind of smell. Mexican varieties, all Mexican varieties, uh, the leaves smell like aniseed. They have a licorice uh, smell to them. So that's one of the first key things to be able to determine if you find a, an avocado, whether or not it's got any chance of surviving in your garden, uh, is the uh, aroma of the leaf if you break it. Um, so that's kind of one of the first identifier marks. Other one is that sometimes the new leaves will flush out a red on a Mexican. Uh, I'll show you again on the hus, the, the flush on that and so you can see the difference comparing. Um, so yeah, so I think we've got a, a fairly good chance here in the southeast to grow uh, bacon avocado in a microclimate. I wouldn't probably recommend it in a, an open, windy exposed area. Uh, for watering, they don't like being over watered. Don't over water your avocado because they're, they're, they're very prone to root rot and so infrequent deep watering once the soil has been allowed to dry out uh, generally, if you're planting in the ground, if you mulch well enough, you should maintain a fairly good moisture level the whole way through, so you won't need to particularly water too much unless you really have a, a hot summer and, and don't get enough rain. Um, but that's kind of, that's about it. Uh, I'll show you the tree and can show you the, uh, the uh, hass as well, so you can sort of compare the two. So this is the young bacon avocado tree. Uh, it's currently in flower. It's decided to, to flush up a load of flowers. Uh, 
But as I kind of mentioned previously, the leaves, they're slightly different to, to the Haas and they have a thicker uh, sheen to them. Um, but if you break one off and you crush it, uh, you should get, your, well, you will get an aniseed smell. So that's one of the main key important things to be able to determine uh, the Mexican varieties of avocado. Uh, and also I talked about the red flash of new leaves. That's a Mexican trait as well. So have a look for that and that'll help you identify. So you can see it's looking pretty healthy. It's a very young tree, so it will need protection for the first uh, year or two or three, uh, depending on how we go. Uh, one from frost during the winter, but also from uh, sunburn during the summer, because it's got a because when they're young, they have this green bark uh, until they get older, and then they sort of mature and they get a sort of a proper bark. This is quite prone to sunburn, so you need to watch out for that as well. Planted in a, a nice sunny location uh, quite a sheltered spot uh, we're against the south facing wall here in the uh, garden so it's quite a nice little spot for it but compare that now to over here is the Haas avocado it's looking a little bit sorry for itself but it's in a pot you can see some of the it lost quite a number of leaves during the winter and this was in an unheated greenhouse so it wasn't particularly that happy in there I mean it's grown out now but you can see the difference in the the leaf how it sort of has a lot more of a thinner uh, delicate look to it so that's the uh, Huss avocado and the bacon is just over there well I hope that sort of explains the project that I'm after uh, for the next sort of uh, couple of years to be able to keep this avocado tree behind me going um, to be able to protect it um, and hopefully once it gets, gets established it should pretty much then look after itself we just want to try and get an avocado to survive uh, it's not the first one that has done down here so I'm fairly confident quietly confident that we can do this and um, I'll keep updated videos and so you can see the progress of the tree so thanks for watching take care